Hello, and welcome to the Cook Memorial Public Library podcast. I'm your host, Nate Goss. This is our annual Oscars recap episode, where I have a chance to sit down with our audiovisual selector, Becky King, and talk about last night's 94th Academy Awards ceremony, and also talk about some of the films from the past year. Last night's televised ceremony was an event, to be sure. And so we had lots to talk about in our conversation, of course, talking about the events within the ceremony itself, but also talking about some of the movies that were awarded, nominated, and also movies that weren't even considered for the Academy Awards. I always look forward to this episode uh, because Becky and I, who also run the Library Cinema Club, just have so much fun talking about movies with each other. And I hope you have just as much fun listening to our conversation. So why don't we go ahead and jump over. This is my conversation with Becky about last night's Academy Awards ceremony. All right, Becky, well, welcome back on the podcast for this, what has become an annual tradition. This is actually our eighth year in a row doing this little uh, morning after Oscars uh, recap episode. Uh, And man, after... uh, Eight years. I thought we had seen it all after the whole like Moonlight La La Land debacle yeah, and, who knew? you know, no hosts the last few years. Right. And COVID. COVID. Yeah. Um, but man, we there was still more in store for right. us, I who guess. Knew, right? um, so I guess maybe that's where we should start is, yeah. is the elephant in can't, the room. Yeah, can't you can't ignore it. You can't ignore what, what happened last night. It's going mm-hmm. to be what people are... I think, unfortunately, talking about the most today. Right. Um, I um, I was listening to the radio this morning, and that's all they talked about. In fact, the segment that I was listening to didn't even mention the Best Picture winner. You know? Uh, you know, it, so that's really sad. I mean, we're talking about the Will Smith, Chris Rock incident, obviously. Right. Yep. So it is, it's sad that it detracted from the winners, unfortunately. Yeah. Right? And it was really the major awards. It was. And these are, you know— these are people who also had dedicated their entire lives to this moment and, right. you know, that led up to this moment and right. earned that spot up there. <laughs> and, right. you know, it kind of got overshadowed by a lot. Took a lot so. of the air out of the room for sure. It certainly did. And I think that, um, you know, as far as like that incident goes, mm-hmm. uh, we could probably, as far as a library podcast goes, leave leave the real discussion of that to the other pundits sure. and things and maybe focus a little bit more on the, you know, the, the rest of the movies of the year and, and talk about that. Beyond that, though, do you have any sort of um, general impressions of your your feelings watching the ceremony last night? It was it seemed to me a really strange mix of things that they did. You know, I think they tried to return to the host format. Not a lot of clips of the best picture nominees. It was a little surprising. You know, I mean, in this day and age, I think the Grammy Awards are all about performances and getting people to buy the music. The Tony Awards are all about performances and getting people into the theaters. Well, if the Oscars is supposed to get people into the movie theaters, I don't know what it was last night that might have done that. I don't know. Very few clips. Um, and, you know, a lot of them just aren't available and people haven't seen them yet. So it's. I think it's just something that they're going to have to address. The industry, industry is going to have to address. People want to see them, but, you know, where are they supposed to see them before the Oscars? Right. I mean, if you go down the list of Best Picture nominees, you know, a lot of them are available on some streaming platform. Almost all of them are. But, you know, um, how many can people afford? Exactly. That's just it. You know, and even as, you know, talking uh, from the library perspective, Mm -hmm. like, you know, part of our mission is to make things like this available to the public. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. It really is. And trying to figure out how we do that in this new streaming environment. So, yeah, I did feel like the, the ceremony itself was a reflection of just sort of the kind of confusing state of the industry right, right now and that the, I I was I didn't find a lot of real enjoyment or joy watching last night right. I just have to be honest and then this is even before the incident I felt sure. like you know like, like they, they took a lot of the uh was it eight of the technical type of awards right. um and they pre-recorded them and it they they definitely sent a message I think that like okay we, these are the boring ones right. and for but you know if this is a show for people who love movies, right. I always looked forward to some of those awards and seeing some of that stuff just as much as any of I mean, the other awards. And the funny thing is, Dune won most of those awards. Yeah. They are a lot of the technical awards. That's probably the one movie that most people have seen this year. <laughs> That's so, true. And, you, the, know, you know, a lot of your sort of like, if you want to call it mainstream audience, was right. rooting for. Exactly. You know? So they didn't get, you know, they saw minor clips of them winning and things like that, but they certainly didn't get their due. Yeah. And, so. and you know, and then you look at what, what it was replaced with and, you know, things like that uh, really silly award for like the f- sort of fan favorite yeah, awards that, that went were... nowhere. A mixed bag. I mean, yeah. you know, Beyonce is great, 
but it was like a Super Bowl performance. Exactly. Well, there's know? that, and, and you and know, and then compare that to Billie Eilish, who won the Oscar, you know, and um, she was just at you know singing with her brother at the piano. That was it. You know, it's just such stark comparisons. Well, and at least that song and Beyonce's song were nominated. Right. But, like, then you had this big performance of Bruno. Hey, of course, that's the big hit right now. Right. And it was Uh, long. But, like... What did that have to do with the you know, ceremony? Because they you messed know. up. They not, they uh, you know submitted the wrong one for nomination. So I, I mean, are we sounding like grumps? I don't we know. Are. But I think th- we I are. think we're just sort of like longtime movie lovers. I've wa- right. I've watched this show for years, and we all kind of took it for what it was as sure. far as the silliness and the pageantry goes. But it felt right. like the the Academy itself was Doesn't sort of short shrifting its own medium here. Like it didn't really feel that much like a real celebration of the I movies. Know. You know, I, you know, and I don't know if the assumption is that they think that people have not seen the movies yet, but if that was their goal to get people excited about seeing the movies, I don't think it worked. I don't yeah, I agree. Because yeah. how much would you have learned about any of these best picture nominees? Right. Really nothing, nothing. through, through the, the actual were show. maybe five, yeah. ten seconds. Yeah. Honestly. Even the performers, even the actors, I don't think were paid their due by any of the clips. Yeah. Well, and what's really unfortunate is actually it was a great, great year it for was, movies. Especially coming off of the prior year. Yeah, there were so many good movies this year. So maybe we should just talk a little bit about that. We can start with the award show and who sure. won and maybe talk about that and then maybe get into a little bit broader just the movies that we liked we of, of 2021 is right. the year we'd be talking about. But right. yeah. So did you have any, um, I guess, awards that you were particularly excited to see given out last night? I did. I'm, you know, no secret, I'm a huge Broadway fan. So, yeah. when, you know, Ariana DeBose won for West Side Story. She's a Broadway performer through and through. You could tell in West Side Story she was all the energy in West Side Story. So it was really exciting to see her win. Yes. And, and she I, won basically every award during the entire award season. I was so going to say, if you awesome. if you had been following it all, that was yeah. kind of a lock. Ab- but absolutely. happy to see it. But you never know. So I was <laughs> glad to see her win. And I liked uh, – I'm, I'm not a, always a big musical uh, mm-hmm. fan for as far as film goes. But I really liked West Side Story because I felt like – I thought Spielberg just it was a really directed movie. the heck out of that thing. Yeah, it was a beautiful movie. Yeah. I, I had issues with it with you know the lead performers, but I, I mean he yeah. did a great job. Well, you remake, know a lot more about musicals than I yeah. do. But I mean, if you're going to remake a classic, he you know he he did well. Yeah. So. so that was nice to see that. Were there other awards that you were happy to see? Um, supporting actor. I always feel like that category gets loaded up, and it was again this year. Mm-hmm. All deserving. Um, but boy, you know it was nice to see Troy. Kotzer, if I'm pronouncing that right, yeah. win for Coda. He was amazing. The whole cast in that movie was great. I agree. I, yeah. I and and he. I mean, what a touching speech. That, yes, yeah, it was a great speech. His character in that movie is. He was the real heart. And exactly. Soul of that movie. I, you know, absolutely no spoilers here. But the third act of that movie, I think, is with his performance, such one of the more touching, Puts it over the one edge. of the touching yeah. parts of the entire uh, movie season. I think that's so. what made the best picture. Yeah. you know, a <laughs> yeah. winner. So I agree. It was fun to see Coda win. I think that was the um, a lot of people's personal favorite movie of the year. Yeah, uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't my yeah. pick, really. It was really, a feel-good movie but of it, the year. And it was a feel-good movie. Um, right. Uh, but it's interesting to think about it being um, the first Best Picture winner that is was put Stream. out by a streaming platform. Now, right. Apple TV didn't make the movie. It was right. already – it was something that they bought – uh, the rights to stream and and, right. and distribute. But that's where it's available. But that's exactly that's where it's at is right. on Apple TV. Um, right. And I have I certainly anticipate just by even looking at the other nominees, uh, such as you know uh, Power of the Dog and these yep. other things that that's only going to continue only. to be it's only going to continue to be a trend. Yeah. And Netflix is stingy, so who knows when we'll see Power of the Dog? Um, you know, and Apple TV has the Best Picture winner now, so they probably aren't going to release that widely on DVD, on DVD Blu-ray DVD you mean? soon either. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. So we don't have any date so far ne- for on, neither one of those. On yeah, either of those for the library. What were your other favorites of the year? My the one that and, th- and this goes back to the incident because I was so disappointed by this. I was really rooting for and figured that Questlove was going to win for Summer, Summer of Soul, Soul. the yep. documentary. Right. Um, and, man, he deserved it. I don't know if right. you saw I Summer did. of Soul. I did. I loved it. Yep. So, and everybody loves it. Right. I don't know a single person who has seen that documentary and didn't just think it was, like, one of the most joyful experiences right. of the movie season. Absolutely. Um, and just also the, the sort of important work that that documentary yep. does in archiving this festival. 
you know, seeing these performances from like Mavis Classic. Staples, Nina Simone, yeah. Stevie Wonder. Fifth Dimension. Just, I mean, just yeah. such, I mean, it's just a great concert doc, yeah. you know, and to see that get recognized at the Academy and in Questlove gave a really moving speech mm-hmm. in there. Yeah, he was overwhelmed. Um, you he can was tell. overwhelmed. I mean, this is a guy who is just, you know, if you know Questlove, he's just a pop culture, like, mastermind. Right. So to see someone who kind of fuses his expertise of music, his sort of, like, <laughs> librarian-ish mind towards music and history, and then bring that together in film, because he's someone who's always appreciated good film right. as well. It was a huge accomplishment, and unfortunately, the timing of it. Because the incident, that was for that Right category. I'm uh, sure people that, would know, have a hard time remembering which what was awarded right after. That, I, I just so. hope you know <laughs> this podcast can do its little part. Right, like, go, exactly. go see Summer of Soul. Because yeah, that it's one so is good. on the shelf at the library. Yeah. so don't miss it. And you won't, you know, you won't regret it. It's nope. you know, it's such a joyful and easy to watch concert documentary. Right. Really, it is. Uh, so I was like, excited to see that. Um, you know, Dune won a lot of the technical mm-hmm. awards, and I was excited to see that because what I loved about Dune was that it was this big sci-fi mm-hmm. kind of action type movie, but Denis Villeneuve really sort of approached, I think, even the CGI in a different way. It had this, like, texture to it that is was very unmarvel. It looked like I'll put a it real way. world. Yeah. It looked like a real world. And that's what it, great sci-fi is, is really right. world building. And I felt right. like he used the technical stuff, the, the production design, the CGI it's a really great effect in that yeah. movie. And he also had a you know, great source material, yeah. right? So he had a great story. Yes. Uh, and, and Hans Zimmer won mm-hmm. for score. I, I was kind of rooting for Johnny Greenwood uh, for Power of the Dogs yeah. score. But Hans Zimmer has definitely put his dues in. He's the in, gold and standard. He, and he does – that's a right. great score for right. Dune as well. I mean, some pleasant surprises for me this year among the um, Best Picture nominees. I loved Nightmare Alley. I – you know, the, what was it? The Shape of Water was Guillermo del Toro's yeah. last film. That one, I was not, I mean, you know, it was fine. I wasn't a big fan. Okay. Nightmare Alley was totally different. It's not a horror film. It's uh, suspenseful. It's kind of psychological. All the performers are amazing. Bradley Cooper's wonderful. Rooney Mara. Um, that one surprised me, I was happy to say. As a nominee? as a no- Well, as a nominee and as just as a movie. Yeah. So I was glad it got the Best Picture okay. nomination. I, I, I haven't finished that one yet. Yeah. I started it over the weekend, and I still need to catch up with it. But, you know, that one definitely, I mean, it was also nominated for cinematography. It's got a great look and, to it. Right. Amazing. I mean, yeah. talk about creating another world, yeah. this carnival world. It was, exactly. It was great. So try that one also. That mm-hmm. one is um, on the shelves. It just came out on in DVD and Blu-ray last week. So, um I guess I also wanted to ask you, what were some awards that, you know, and we're not going to knock the people who won, but was there anybody who you were really, like, rooting for that you really wish would have won? Um, You know, I I think all of them were okay with me. I think the Best Actress contest this year, again, was loaded. Yeah. Um, Jessica Chastain, she's always good, and she was excellent in the um, eyes of Tammy Faye, no doubt. Yes. I... In my mind, Olivia Coleman can do no wrong. I love her. <laughs> I, people that have seen the movie The Lost Daughter either love it or hate it. Um, I'm in the I like it category. I am too. Because, I like that movie. But, because of her performance yeah. and the performance of um, Jesse Buckley, who was also nominated as supporting actress. And the one scene, I, if you watch the movie, you'll know exactly which scene got Olivia Coleman nominated. because, mm. And they showed a clip of it last night. Yeah. But she's great. I didn't think she was going to win because I think people are really hot and cold on that movie. But if you get a chance to see it, um, you know, it's different. It's on Netflix. You know, Nicole Kidman's performance in Being the Ricardos was was excellent. It was another movie that I went into it expecting nothing and, not, you know, not really wanting to see it. And it was so much more mm. than I expected. So well done. Such a comment on the um, culture at the time and how incredibly difficult it was to be a woman mm. in charge at the time. And yeah. I thought she did. I thought her she would be really distracting as Lucille Ball. She nailed it. She was she was really good. Well, and Nicole Kidman, I mean, is she's just always, always good, great. too. Yeah. yeah. Well, and th- th- I feel like that was a category where it was not only loaded, but it was loaded with actresses that are just always going to do good work. Right. You know, like I'm with you where I'm glad Jessica Chastain was finally recognized, but right. I, I kind of feel like it was for the wrong movie. <laughs> it, doesn't it always seem <laughs> that know? way? Because um, I thought Eyes of Tammy Faye was, it was fine. The movie was okay. You know? She was great. Yeah. And, but that's been happening a lot lately, yeah. you know, where the movie's okay and more career awards. Um, we had talked about Kristen Stewart and Spencer. That was my, I, 
out of all the awards I know. for the night, that's the one I was most rooting for. And I knew it probably wasn't going to happen, but that I really thought upset. Kristen Stewart, yeah. I was really hoping she would have pulled that off. I mean, she but. has done amazing work the past few years in independent films and things like that. I was really happy to see her get the nomination. Again, great performance in a somewhat uneven movie, yeah. but um, a be- much better movie than I pe- think people probably expected. Well, either that or the movie was not what they expected at all. Right, it was right. for Which the reason case, they didn't like it. Yeah, right. and for me, um, I don't even know if I told you this, but that turned into I do a ranking list of my favorite mm-hmm. movies of the year, kind of ranked highest to lowest, and that ended up being my favorite movie of the year. I mean, was Spencer, I, Spencer, I, liked I loved it. it. I um, thought it was going to be just a gushy, you know, Diana movie. Yeah, and, a biopic. Right, right exactly, you know. and was. Really, a, a study in paranoia yeah. and mental illness and claustrophobia. It had all these elements Wonderful. of psychological horror, but it's not a psychological horror movie. No. It didn't. It didn't even use those tools it's to that tense. effect. It's, it's just so a tense. tense. And that movie, you could go down all the technical stuff. Like it has right. a great score, great editing. Um, yep. It has a really, I thought, pretty tight script for what it's doing, even though it's really surreal. Right. Excellent cast. Pablo Lorraine is doing some great direction. The cinematography is amazing. Right. It was. Um, I'm blinking on the name, but it's who did Portrait of a Lady on Fire yep. Uh, yep. before. And so there was so many things that were great about that movie, but it all orbits around or Kristen, Kristen Stewart's Stewart. performance. I and I couldn't believe what she was doing in that movie. I know. You know. It just seems like in every scene, she's just making the exact right choices right. about how to play that scene. Yeah, excellent. I mean, yeah. I can't say enough about her performance. I, I loved it as well. I'm glad she, so glad she got the nomination. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then that, that leads us to probably talking about the best actor category. Now, here's the thing is I didn't even see King Richard, mm-hmm. so I can't really speak at all I on did. Will Smith's performance. Yeah, um, he was excellent, excellent. Hi, again, it was a really good movie. That's an inspiring movie, a feel-good movie as well. Um, again, you know, was it his best performance ever? Probably not. Mm. Um, a, another maybe career award, but certainly deserved. He was very, very good in the movie. Um but I was kind of rooting for Benedict Cumberbatch. I was too, <laughs> and I, like I said, I hadn't seen uh, King Richard. But right. of what I of the other nominees, I, I just thought Benedict Cumberbatch was amazing in that amazing movie. in Power of the Dog. Yeah. That had to be such a tough performance. Yeah. Um, I read an interview where he said he was in character during the entire filming of that. And I'm like, oh, Oh, I'm sure he was a real peach to be around then. (laughs) I can't even imagine. But um, I I don't know what more could be expected of an actor. I'm sure he's sitting there. You know, I mean, obviously, he's a professional. He's going to be happy for whoever wins. But he's probably also thinking, what more do I have to do? (laughs) Well, that's the thing is it was such an un-Benedict Cumberbatch performance, I felt like. You know, it was just really unrecognizable. It just really showed his range, I thought. You know, I read a description of it where it said it's um, – people think of it as a Western, but it's really a psychological thriller disguised as a Western. Sure. yeah. And, again, to see him in that environment is so unusual. And, you know, Power of the Dog is a movie that I really liked. I I think that um, it was sort of seen as the front runner for Best for Picture uh, until CODA kind of came in um, and you started seeing from the other was- award shows that it was picking up enough and – uh, so in my mind, it kind of came down to those two as far right. as what I thought was going to win. I think that's true. And um, But yeah, and Power of the Dog, though, is one of those where, you know, even if it had one, it, it's – that's another polarizing movie. I agree. Uh, I agree. Some people love it. Some people really don't like it. I'm in the love it camp. I really love that movie. I've always kind of been a fan of Jane Campion, though. Oh, she's she amazing. So that was that was a great win. We can talk about yeah. that too. Um, I agree with you. I really liked it. I I was tense throughout the entire movie. I, I loved the joke during the ceremony about you know watch it to the end. <laughs> yeah, you have to. You absolutely have to stick with it till the end. It's totally worth it. Um, but there's so many sort of like sub texts and layers to that movie. Like there's right. sort of what's happening and then there's all the sort of motives and emotions right. and things that are happening underneath. And I think it's very telling that all of the um, main characters in the movie were all nominated yeah. for their performances. That says a lot right there, right. as well as the Best Picture nominee. That doesn't happen very often. That's true. That's a good so, point. Yeah. yeah. You know, one movie that was nomi- that was nominated for Best Picture, also nominated for Original Screenplay, was Licorice Pizza. Yeah. Um, Paul Thomas Anderson. I, I just I, – I love the guy. He's like one of my top – maybe even top like three directors yeah. really. So, of course, I was going to go see that movie. And I don't feel like it disappointed at all. It was just a different kind of movie for him to do. You right. Know? Uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, if you're not aware, you know, he's done like There Will Be Blood, The Master, um, Phantom Always Thread. Always mixing it up. Yeah. 
um, Boogie Nights is some of his earlier yeah. work, Magnolia. And uh, Licorice Pizza is kind of this interesting coming-of-age movie in right. the 70s. With, uh, and it stars California. California, yep. Because of that, knowing Paul Thomas Anderson is probably one of his more personal films. Right, he I think he said in, it. In, in yeah, California. it reflects a lot of his childhood. Um, but Cooper Hoffman, who's actually the uh, son Philip of Philip Seymour. Seymour Hoffman and Alana Haim, are right. just so good together. They're natural. I, I loved their performances. There's always a movie every year that you and I like totally disagree about. You don't like that one? You know what? It was okay. Yeah. And I saw it in the theater. I was really excited to see it in the theater because it was so hyped. Just, I, you know, and maybe it was the creep factor for there me. There is some creep factor. Because yep. he plays a 15-year-old and yep. she plays, what, like a 25-year-old or yep. something like that? Yep. And so I'm, you know, ooh. I mean, I, I, I get the concept. It was entertaining. And um, I, I admire the performances. I do. I think they both are so natural and so good at what they did. But the movie, I was just a little disappointed. Oh. So sorry, Nate. <laughs> uh, there's so much we could dig into on there. I, I think know. we're gonna not for this episode though. We'll have right. to do it some other time. Maybe for yeah. a cinema. Club. I mean, I loved the music. <laughs> I loved, you know, I loved the yeah. look of it. I don't know why it just left me flat. Uh, you know, I'm not surprised, obviously, that it didn't win. This just wasn't the year for it. But I, I do feel like for the library, if you're listening and you just kind of want, um, I think of those, that's another one that's a little bit lighter. I mean, it's got some it heavier is. elements to it. Um, and, of course, there's the creep factor you're talking know, about. Yeah. So you got to have to kind of like be okay with a little bit of discomfort. But, yeah, just something that would be kind of a breezy, fun watch. Right, uh, a weekend for watch, yeah. for sure. Well, then, uh, you know, before we kind of wrap up this episode, let's talk a little bit about the movies that didn't end up in the Academy Awards conversation at all. Okay. Uh, but there were so many great movies this year. I know you probably have a couple that... You know, mine are I, probably not what you're expecting. I, with, because of Summer of Soul and the music documentary and just how amazing that was, I started thinking about the other um, music documentaries that I saw this year. One of the best was Tina on HBO hmm. Max about Tina Turner. It's actually already out on DVD. We have it here. Amazing. I mean, I love her anyway. Her energy is amazing. Um, and it's really an interesting documentary about um, how she wasn't all about Ike Turner and really the difficulty in overcoming you know, after she left him and the next phase of her career and how she got so tired of talking about that and just wanted to be accepted on her mm. own terms. And again, amazing concert footage. I mean, she is just a dynamo. Yeah. And then on the polar opposite of that was another music documentary that I watched. Um, and again, on HBO Max was Listening to Kenny G. I saw that. Oh, did you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It was you know, interesting. It was entertaining, and it was basically every jazz critic or professor or anybody just, like, hates Kenny G because he is, like, the epitome of smooth jazz and yep. not what jazz should be, and he doesn't care. He's, like, like the best-selling instrumental, you know, artist of all time. He does what he likes. He makes the kind of music that he likes, and he's unapologetic about it. That's sort of the conflict of the movie. Is right. The, the movie doesn't know how to feel right. about it. Like, is this guy a great— They're talking like, to both people that love him, people that hate him, yeah. and he's like, well— Whatever. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he doesn't even, he, he kind of hesitates to even call himself a, a jazz, jazz musician. musician. He's right. just what he does, right. and this is what he does. That's part of why the critics also don't like him is because right. he's not part of the sort of conversation of jazz. You know, he sort of kind of came out And he's pretty outside clear that he and, didn't really even study the jazz right. masters, yeah. you know, and that kind of thing, which so, I think really, really makes the Yeah, point. I like that movie for that reason. I really liked how it the movie didn't even really settle one way or the other. Right. It just kind of left that debate. Right. Like, we're talking about a Kenny G debate here. Right. But, like, you know, yeah. it's, it's a really interesting debate to have about, like, sort of what does give someone, like, credibility in the right. music scene. Well, and, um, and, and people like what they like. So um, that was entertaining. I yeah. loved it. There were just so many biopics this year. I also enjoyed Respect with Jennifer Husband, the Aretha Franklin story. Hmm. She did an amazing, amazing job. She probably at some point was on the Best Actress Potential, you know, nominee list and things like that. What were your favorites of the year besides uh, Licorice Pizza? <laughs> uh, I had a, I had quite a few. I'm just going to almost like run down sure. them because we don't have yeah. a lot of time to get deep into them. But like some of the ones that weren't really mentioned that I really think people should check out. Well, I talked about Spencer already, which right. uh, really only Kristen Stewart got attention for that. But I just think right. it was a good movie. It was. Um, another one that I was surprised didn't get anything was a movie called Green Knight. Oh, yeah. Uh, which was directed, Patel. directed by David Lowry, stars Dev Patel, and it's sort of a retelling of King Arthur. But, you know, that's a movie that also has a lot of surreal elements to it. I can see why maybe it wouldn't have picked up a lot of the, the big nominations, but cinematography it was cinematography. It was, was such, amazing. It was a gorgeous movie. Right. And um, David Lowry is always going to give you a movie that, 
you know, gives you plenty to chew on right. uh, if you really want to dig in. Like he did um, a ghost story mm-hmm. uh, a couple years ago. Yep, that was interesting. Uh, yes, they're all interesting. Yeah. Uh, and, but Green Knight, I actually feel like is his his best so far. I thought it was really good, too. I enjoyed it. And, yeah. you know, again, that's not normally my kind of music, but the word of mouth about it was so good that I watched it. I totally enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, another one would be uh, the movie Pig. Uh, which stars Nicolas Cage, and yeah. I've, you know, and I feel like Nicolas Cage is someone that maybe a lot of us kind of had written off yes. uh, because he had been in just so many almost like direct to DVD type right. movies or just you know sort of throwaway type movies. But Pig is very different, um, and it's just about a guy who is a truffle hunter mm-hmm. out in Oregon, and he uses a pig to find these, and someone steals his pig, yeah. and he has to go try to figure out who does it, and the movie definitely changes his tone a couple times uh, and I really liked how it kind of you, you didn't really know where it was going to go the whole time I think it's another polarizing film yeah. you don't like that <laughs> it, was, I, I, it was fine <laughs> <laughs> we'll um, disagree on that one a little bit later. I've got three more I'll run through real quick. One of them was uh, Zola by Janica Bravo, which was based uh, based on a Twitter thread. So based mm-hmm. on a true story, but the true story was documented as a Twitter right. thread. This is a very adult movie, so yes. definitely don't see it uh, with the family. <laughs> but, you know, and it starts stars um, Taylor Page and Riley Keough. Uh, and it kind of dives deep into this world of exotic dancing, right. uh, escorts. Um, but it's, it is... I mean, I'll tell you, that's a movie that is just pedal to the metal right away. I mean, yeah. you won't be bored. I'll put it that way. Right. It just So I like that movie quite a bit. There's another one called The Ca- Card Counter. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tiffany Haddish uh, was in the ceremonies last night as a presenter. A highlight, But yeah. she did a great supporting performance in that movie, which stars Oscar Isaac, written and directed by Paul Schrader, who did uh, like First Reformed, was one of his last movies with Ethan Hawke. Um, but yeah, it's Oscar Isaac just plays a professional gambler who actually um, is uh, kind of fresh out of prison. Mm-hmm. And that movie also brings in some themes and topics that you don't Unexpected. expect. Right. Uh, and Tiffany Haddish kind of plays his uh, – she kind of becomes his manager of sorts uh, in the casino. But I like that one quite a bit. I'm, You know, Tiffany Haddish is becoming one of these performers that whatever she's in is worth watching. Yes. She's amazing. And yes. so far, she's been mostly, you know, supporting roles. She's ready for a movie of her own. I agree. Um, yeah. I mean, a, a good movie, like a really meaty movie of her yeah, own. Yeah, she's just one of those. She, I, I guess, she's I don't know how to put it to say she's got it. Yeah, like, she's, she as does. soon as she's on the screen, you just can't look it's away. It's that it factor. Yeah. And she had it last night in a really brief appearance as a presenter. Yeah. You know, yep. I mean, it's just it. She has that it factor. Totally agree. My last pick will be just a really light, fun one if you're looking for a comedy, and that is Barb and Star Go to Vista <laughs> Del Mar with Kristen Wiig and Annie Momolo. Um, I just, my wife and it I watched fun. this, and it was just really stupid fun. Right. Really funny um, and, and, and you need that one kind of smart. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So those would be some of my picks. Uh, but yeah, 2021 was a great year. It was a, a big rebound, that's for sure, which was fun to see for yeah. me, for sure. And I feel like, you know, unfortunately, the ceremonies didn't quite live up to what the year yeah. in film was. Hopefully you know? it's time to reboot and, and figure it out. <laughs> I hope so, Right, too. if they're trying to get more viewers, we need to do that, so... All right. So as we're wrapping up here, uh, Becky, uh, you are the the selector of our audiovisual materials. So do you want to just talk a little bit about the, some of the movies we mentioned and how people can get their hands on them? Sure. I, I'll give you a really quick rundown of which ones are actually in the library now that you can put on hold. And that would be Belfast, Dune, King Richard, um, Nightmare Alley, West Side Story, The Eyes of Tammy Faye, Spencer, um, you know, quite a few. Flea, which was nominated in three That's categories. That's a great movie. I can't believe we didn't even talk I know, about that. That yeah. was excellent. Um, nominated for animated film, foreign film, and documentary. It's too bad it didn't win any. Yeah, it was great. Um, and then we also have on order Parallel Mothers with Penelope Cruz, which I really enjoyed. We didn't talk about that one either. That was definitely worth watching. And The Worst Person in the World, one of the foreign film nominees. And um, Writing with Fire is on order as well. And then there's a documentary called Lunana, A Yak in the Classroom, that's actually available on <laughs> okay. our Canopy streaming service. So oh, if you cool. want to catch that one. But otherwise, there um, a lot of the other films are on streaming services, and we can um, we have Roku's where you can check out um, you know Netflix and things like that. Otherwise, call the library. We do have a list of where you can find those movies that you're looking for on sure. streaming services. Yeah, I'll just clarify a little bit for the Roku's. If you check out our Roku device uh, from the library, it has preloaded on it access to Netflix, HBO Max, um, Hulu. 
and Disney, Disney Plus. Disney Plus. And that's where a lot of them are. Yes. So, so um, unfortunately, not Coda. Coda is Apple TV. Apple TV. Um, but yeah, we'll, you know, we're, we're, we're looking into seeing if we can maybe add that as right. well, but nothing yet. Sorry. Right. So a lot of these nominees, if we don't have them in, you'll be able to find them on one of those streaming services that we subscribe to for you. All right. Well, uh, this wraps up our eighth annual uh, Oscars recap episode. Uh, so thank you so much, Becky, yeah. for always coming on here. It's always and fun. It's, Thanks, a, Nate. it's always a fun conversation. All right. Thank you so much for listening. I'm hoping that after listening to that, you have a couple movies on your to watch list. And Becky just did a great job talking about all the different ways you can use the library to catch up on some of those titles. So if you need to reserve some DVDs, some Blu-rays, maybe that Roku player, head on over to our website, www.cooklib.org, and search those titles and place your holds. While you're over on our website, make sure you check out our blog, Shelf Life, where staff members write about what they've been reading, along with local history stories, genealogy tips, and so much more. That blog can be found at shelflife.cooklib.org. And please uh, reach out to us anytime with your questions, comments, or feedback about the podcast. You can always send us an email, send those messages to webmaster at cooklib.org, or you can reach out to us on Twitter at cooklibrary. And if you enjoyed this episode, please tell others about it and let them know that they can catch this episode along with any past or future Cook Memorial Public Library podcast episodes in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or really wherever they like to get their podcasts. We will be back soon, but until then, keep reading, keep watching, and keep listening. Keep listening.